off the last set of cars, I got a really bad vibration as they were towing me off the track. I was pretty sure that the motor was blown up. We pulled it to the pit area, tore the motor down. The motor was a lot worse than I thought it would be. So then I was really double bummed. I had, to, had a blown up motor and I had to make an announcement to the fans that I wasn't gonna be racing anymore tonight. Tonight, man, I'm, we're out of here. I mean, as far as racing and, hey, I hate to disappoint all my fans, but it's, it's disappointing to me too because that's an expensive motor. We come a long ways to race hard. And hey, I appreciate you guys supporting us and thank you for coming out and cheering us on, man. If it wasn't for you guys, none of us would be here. I knew after seeing the damage that it was going to be a long night, long day, a thrash to get this thing back together. <laughs> motor I got from Porter, it was fitted for his truck, so when you start cramming it in a digger frame, it just doesn't work. We're doing a motor swap, so many little brackets, you had to modify the oil pan. Now we're dealing with the oil pump pickup. One way or another, this truck's gonna run. Showtime, been working all day long switching motors. We just got to wire the motor up, get our fuel going to it, finish sealing up the oil pan, put oil in the motor and get it fired up and hope for the best. All right, Gary, what do you need? The show is in jeopardy in about 15 minutes and we'll see if Digger can make the call or not. If not, we're going to go with nine trucks. I wouldn't be ready to pull through the line if it wasn't for all my competitors. They're helping get me fixed just so they can try to beat me. You believe that? Came down to the finals, it was me and Blue Ribbon Bandit. It was a pretty tough run. Our truck wasn't 110%. Once we finished up there, we were on our way back to the shop. Right here is a digger's dungeon and a monster truck shop. Oh, come on inside, let me show you what we've got. I've got big connecting rods. I've got boxes and boxes of them. Some are good, some are bad. Some of them are from crashes. You can see here's one where I've blown a motor. And Grave Digger's always got a motor on deck. We run them hard, and so we have to stay up on top of the motors, replacing rods and pistons in them. This is where we rebuild the transmissions, replace the clutches in them. We've even got spare headlights. We blow out a headlight. We'll put a fresh headlight in it. Turn on his red headlights in an old 1950 Chevy panel truck. That's a deal that we started a long time ago, one of my first panel trucks. I made this hauler out of an old school bus. It had the red lights in it, and they're actually a red seal beam light, and they'll fit right in your headlights. But don't nobody else take those red headlights and put them in your vehicle. I need them. We were sitting in the shop one night, and it was after I got the first flame job on the front of the truck. And I didn't like those flames. I've never really kind of liked flames until Fred painted those spooky flames on my truck, so he calls them. And I had those white lights in there. And I looked up on the workbench, and I had the old red lights we took out of the bus. I told Keith, I said, man, we ought to throw those red lights in there and hook those dudes up. They look cool, I bet. So we jumped up and jammed on it, which it only took us like 30 minutes, man. We hooked them up, put them in, and looked at it. And it was so awesome, we couldn't believe it. We just celebrated the rest of the night over our red headlights. Couldn't wait to come to the first show with them. Back in the old days when I was racing, Army Armstrong actually started the fad that when Grave Diggers got those red headlights on, he's 100%. And here comes the one they all come to see, Army. Grave Digger, Dennis Anderson out of Chesapeake, Virginia. You know, Scott, it's really amazing. When he comes in the building with those red lights, those beady red lights, the crowd just kind of takes a deep breath because they know something's going to happen. Well, I started getting fan letters from it. Like, if I had a headlight that would blow out in the truck, I'd turn my headlights off and I wouldn't even run them, you know, because we didn't have another one to put back in it. Well, I'd get fan letters or get calls and say, well, we were in so-and-so race and you didn't uh, have your headlights on, you weren't running 100%. So, man, people pay attention to that stuff. And um, now it's like, heck, man, if those lights are not working on that truck, we're panicking. This is Digger's Dungeon. This is a merchandise store. This is where we sell all of our souvenirs. We sell t-shirts, hats, footballs, uh, beach bags. 
We've got all kinds of souvenirs. We've got broken parts from the truck that we sell, and um, occasionally they're on display. When they run out of broken parts, I'll go out on the track and I'll build them some more. What our main business here is, is building and maintaining monster trucks. Well, this is my new truck, 1997. Number 12, it was created here last year. It's cool, it's awesome, and it's bad. Compared to the other digger trucks, the windshield is laid back. It's more aerodynamic looking. We've uh, cropped the back of the truck and sloped the back. The door's got six inches added into it. I drive this one from the center. It's kind of changed the paint scheme a little bit. Same concept, but added some purples in it. The truck is a 152-inch wheelbase. We used to always run a 130-inch wheelbase. All combs gas shocks all the way around on this truck. And uh, haven't really got the feel for it yet. I got to drive it a little bit, get some uh, time in the seat. And I'll be ripping and tearing in this truck really good, I think. We spent 90 days building this new truck. We finally finished it. It was time to pack it up and hit the road and go to our first race in St. Louis. Right here in St. Louis, Missouri, this is Bigfoot's hometown. So you know Bob Chandler didn't send any slack over here. Barefoot's bad now. The old man Fred, he's tough. This is his hometown too. Everybody knows this new truck's coming out, and you know those guys would love to say that new grave digger, it ain't nothing, man. I beat him in St. Louis, but that's all right. They might beat me here tonight, and I might come in last place. Who knows? But on down the road, this old truck will make them sweat. I'll guarantee it. It would be cool if I could win with this brand new truck out here tonight. I'd be so stoked, I could probably drive all the way home without sleeping for two more days. Man, I gotta rush. I gotta wash my hands, shine the truck, put my spray foam on the tires, armor on my dash, dust my suit off, it's been hanging up for a while, clean my helmet up, wipe my windshield down, check the oil, set in the truck, and think about what's gonna happen. Just hope for the best, man. Just I hope I feel confident right now. Eat them up. You got that spray foam? All right. All right, cool. Crew man is ready. We got us a little Instamatic throwaway camera. Fresh Mountain Dew. The fire foam and the dust mop. I just dropped the timing back about three degrees. It was a little high. Earlier, we were adjusting our shocks just so we'll know where we're starting from, a starting point. And it'll take us a while to get this thing dialed in. Tonight, the truck feels good. I'm just going to drive it as hard as I feel like I can drive it without tearing it up. I'm going to go on and take it in. I don't even know how to get in this truck. Still rushing. Pit party, people waiting. If everybody would just set their watch back about 15 minutes, I think I'd be on time. My fans are beating me in the building. Ceremony. I'm standing on the tire of the truck, my heart's rushing, especially this brand new truck. I can't wait to get out there and see what it's going to do. The brand new Grave Digger, longer wheelbase. The first race with the new truck was against the Little Tiger. It felt good when I took off with the truck. When I went over that last jump, I knew something wasn't right on it. We got some suspension problems. I had to run again. Add to the bone. So I raised the ride height, put some more nice pressure in it, and hope that'll do it. You know, on the day I was born, nurses all gathered round. And they gazed in wide wonder at the joy they had found. I hope these bladers let my nitrogen out and start all over. Then the nurse spoke up, said, leave this one alone. She was held out of that I was bad to the bone. I ain't doing no jumping. Bad 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 bad. We were 
they're able to get the shot straightened down on the truck, trying to come back in for freestyle. Just want to come out and cut a few donuts, do some light jumps. The crowd loved it, man. Even though we didn't win that race, we'll get them down the road. We're on our way to Chicago to Rosemont Horizon on the road again. It's been maybe a couple of years ago, I crashed and burned down in Hagerstown really bad. I was racing Fred Schaefer, and the track was really a, a wild track. I flew through the air and almost tagged Fred, and I came down, I turned my wheels in the air. As I was coming down on the ground, I was just crossed up, and the truck just started flipping and tumbling. It tore it all up, and when I ended up landing or stopping and getting out of it, there wasn't even a body left on it. Man, I crashed that truck so hard. That was, that was really the hardest crash that I've done. It was the best crash I ever done. It looked like a plane crash. It was just stuff scattered all down the track. But it was pretty cool. And I hope we got some footage of it. Even when you see us crash a monster truck and roll over, we've got all kinds of safety features inside. We've got an awesome roll cage. We've got shoulder harnesses, lap belts. We wear a neck brace. The neck brace uh, includes a helmet, a set of gloves. We've got a main onboard fire extinguisher system, shut off switch over here that just shuts off all of our power. The trucks are just really safe. Outside the truck, we have the rear safety switch, which by pulling this will activate and shut the truck off at any time. I also have the RI, remote ignition interrupter, which by pressing this button, it will shut the truck off at any time, anywhere in the stadium. One time I'd flown out of California, sent the crew back, I don't usually fly around and drive my own rig. It was at the uh, Astrodome. I got iced in. We had a really bad ice storm. So I got on the phone with the United States Hot Rod people. They wanted to know what we were going to do about the truck. I said, man, we just need to get another driver to drive. And he said, well, who, who would you like to drive? And I said, well, see if Tom from Monster Patrol would drive it, or either Eldon from Taurus. So Eldon said he would do it for me. And Eldon went out there and drove the truck. And and I talked to him afterwards, and he told me, he says, man, he says, that truck is, is a squirrely truck to drive. He says, you're just basically getting that truck and ride it. Are you ready to go racing? Silverdome. I like it because it's big. They put in a challenging course up there. Now I've been racing long enough that I don't get those butterflies, but every so often when you walk into a big dome and there's all the seats are empty, there's nobody there, you're just coming in checking the track out. You're scratching your head because you know you're used to having your truck dialed in for these certain ramps or for these certain turns or whatever. And you come in there, man, they got dirt mobiles, big hills. It's a crazy course, and I've just got a nervous feeling inside, but it's like an anxious nervous because I'm really curious. I want to try it and see how good I can do on it. It'll take you about two or three good runs around there, and then you'll get that throttle rhythm down for over your mobiles and your hills, and a lot of times it's awesome, man. I like some wild, crazy courses like that. I'll hate them if I go out there the first time and do bad and break something on the truck. I don't like it then. But let me make a couple of rounds around that field and get all my mess in one basket. I'll start liking that course. I love some crazy driving. You asked for it. What do you do in your spare time? Nothing I like to do better than to win a race, go fishing and catch fish, man, and ride down the road. Fishing is something I love to do. That's really about the most relaxing thing I can do because there's not there's not a phone out here. I used to always be so...